Creativity in the Age of COVID with Dr. Judy Bloom and Richard Skipper. It's the only program in which therapy and entertainment come together to show everyone not only how to cope in the age of COVID, but how to be creatively productive through it all. And now, Dr. Judy Bloom and Richard Skipper. Happy Thursday, everybody, and welcome to episode six of Creativity in the Age of COVID. Before we begin, I want to take a moment to remind everyone that it has been 252 days since our theaters shut down. And of course, that encompasses so many people on both sides of the footlights who were affected by this. And I'm also thinking of the time of year that we're in right now. Right now, on a normal year, whatever that means anymore, uh, I would be busy prep, uh, prepping for next uh, Thursday's big dinner. Um, I love to cook. And I normally have between 12 to 15 people at my house celebrating the holidays, uh, kicking off the holidays. But unfortunately, this year, that's not to be. Uh, I will be home with my husband, my partner, uh, having a very quiet Thanksgiving. But this month also happens to be Gratitude Month. And the things that we are grateful for, if we can look for those things, it will help us get through this. And one of the people that I am truly grateful for is Dr. Judy Bloom. I'm having a problem with my mouse here. There she is. Um, how are you, Dr. Judy Bloom? How are you? I'm good. How are you, Richard? I'm doing fine. So it's been uh, a couple of weeks since we last saw each other. What's been happening in your world and what's new and exciting? In very, the very, very busy. You know, uh, it's just everybody has been dealing with so much anxiety and COVID fatigue. Um, that's really what I'm seeing the most of. Uh, and at this point, that's a, it's a normal reaction to this very abnormal mm -hmm. situation that we all find ourselves in. So people are kind of, you know, they, they understand for the most part, they understand why all the precautions are, are necessary and they're on board with that, um, but they're just uh, in, into that kind of malaise about you know the whole situation, and really being able to you know find ways to keep up their spirits um, is really important. So for everyone, it's you know nutrition, exercise, you know, and maybe if you can't go to the gym, you can still go for a walk or a run. You know, you have legs, <laughs> or you can work out to a video um, online. You know, so really understanding how important all those things are, meditation, um, you know, uh, mindfulness practices, and yeah. gratitude. You know, we're in the gratitude season, right? And Absolutely. that can make an enormous difference in how you feel, really understanding all the things that you do have to be thankful for. Well, in addition to the COVID fatigue, we're also dealing with election fatigue yes, uh, still going on. And it's the not knowing yeah. that is uh, putting everybody on edge on yeah. both sides yeah. of the line. Uh, so, uh, uh, and I keep quoting him as my dear friend David Friedman says, we're all in this together, but we're not in the same boat. Right. Um, but anyway, I am thrilled that you're here. I am thrilled that we are, can you believe it, episode six? Right. <laughs> uh, the time goes. And I'm very excited about today's show because we have three incredible women who are very creative in their fields. And uh, they all happen to be friends of mine. I think you are meeting them uh, for the first time. Uh, but I am thrilled that they are here. And... Uh, before we bring on our first guest, I'd like to ask you, Dr. Bloom, what makes you smile, especially now? Well, everything makes me smile, actually. Um, I'm, I, I, I am naturally, I'm very fortunate in that I'm a naturally kind of a happy person. You know, uh, I tend to look at, you know, the, the glass as half full. Um, so even when things don't go well, I may get frustrated by things, but that's okay. I don't get terribly angry or upset about them. I just get frustrated and I acknowledge that. Okay, I'm frustrated. So it's really perspective um, on, on everything in life. Having a little bit of distance and being able to kind of observe without buying into too much, I think is really it for me. The things that make me happiest are exercise. I, mm -hmm. I, really, I love to, I walk and 
Um, when I can go to bar classes and yoga classes, I do that. And when, when not, I do them online. Uh, or I, I love this time of year, getting out and going for a nice walk. Even after this, yeah. it's already dark here. I can't believe how dark it is. I was talking to a friend earlier and I says, I feel like it's the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. It's so dark right now. But that brings us to our first guest. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Mindy Fratkin, who's got to get a little bit more sensitive. Oh, there I am. There you go. Uh, Mindy is also known as Princess Wow. And she has created her own revolution called the Smile Revolution. Now, the Smile Revolution did not begin as a result of COVID. This is something that Mindy has been doing for years. Uh, as you can see, she has this phenomenal hat. Uh, she makes hats. Uh, she is all about colors. She brings joy to people's lives. And uh, she's gotten very, very creative during this time frame. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring her on. Um, Mindy, welcome, first of all. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And if you can tell everybody a little bit about the work that you've been doing uh, as a result of COVID. Okay. So what happened was, was um, um, well, I am, a, I am an entertainer and I was traveling, doing touring with another one woman show that I wrote um, before COVID. And um, what happened was the first week of shutdown, my friend, I was like really wracked with fear, like almost everybody, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend, Abby Scher, she picked up on it. She could tell that I was like really, ag you know, anxious and everything. And she said, and I occasionally I did an uplifting Facebook. I did uplifting Facebook lives occasionally. So she said to me, um, you know, why don't you do an uplifting, uh, why don't you do an uplifting Facebook live? And I'm like, okay. So it was like the second day of shutdown. And I did one and it was like, I say I had a radio show years ago to promote the Smile Revolution and I have an album of Smile songs, I'm a singer too. And um, I, I, I've i done a lot of things with the Smile Revolution for the last 15 years, which started the last time I saw my dead conscious, he gave me a big grin and that smile changed my life for the better. And this idea came to me, um, I was on the radio a lot. And so anyway, that's this whole thing unfolded years ago. Well, anyway, so I had and all my I had all my costumes and my hats and my colors, colorful clothes and and material for my radio show. And it just unfolded. I just did the show and I did it every day that first week. And I got so many people who made people feel and made me feel better. I wasn't fear. I was like it, it broke the mesmerism for me with the fear. And then um, other people were telling me how much it helped them. And then, so then after that, I started doing it three times a week. And I did that for months and then twice a week. And then now I'm back to like twice a week too. But um, I've been, this is my 80th, sh I've, I'm on my 81st show. Oh, wow. And uh, so it's, and it's been evolving. I do dance parties and I, and I know a lot of musicians. So I've been like, you know, um, promoting my musician friends and uh, dance parties and baking shows. And it's kind of unfolded. I go in my closet and people want to see what I'm wearing and all my clothes. I know it's just kind of and uplifting quotes because I've always loved quotes. And, and so it's your just, closet looks like a rainbow exploded. One of my friends said, it, is I, she calls it my happy closet. Mm. And so, you know, uplifting quotes. And as far as my radio show, I had all these authors I promoted with uplifting, you know, spiritual, you know, ideas and stuff. So, I quote from them and just, so it just kind of on all these different ideas and it's still in development. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's been really helping me so much and feel making me feel happier mm -hmm. and being able to smile. And I'm wearing, just so you know, I'm wearing smile earrings today. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and I also have smile pants on, but you can't see them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, in, if, I'll go ahead. Uh, Dr. Well, I was going to say you make a, a really good point, though. You know, it, making other people happy makes us happy. That that is what you know. It, when you were asking before, Richard, what makes me smile? You know, knowing that I'm working with people and helping them get through this situation that makes me smile. Mm -hmm. so right. It, you know, it, it is very much that same thing. When we can give back to others, it it, it helps us. Right. Well, right. that's a perfect segue to our next guest. Uh, Sue Matsuki, 
Uh, I'm going to bring her on so I can make sure that she hears what I have to say about her. Um, <laughs> Sumitsuki is considered the godmother of cabaret, which she can explain to you. Uh, she is a singer. She's a songwriter. Uh, Multi-award, uh, our cabaret award, uh, for those of you who don't know, is the Manhattan Association of Cabarets and Clubs. And Sue has won an award, if I'm not mistaken, in probably every category except for female impersonation. And <laughs> almost, she, almost. She may have one of those too. <laughs> She's won so many awards. Uh, I don't think there's a person in the cabaret community who doesn't know who Sumitsuki is. And just before the pandemic, uh, her, along with David Sabella, wrote a book called So You Want to Sing Cabaret. And so the book comes out, and guess what? In the midst of a pandemic. Yeah. This is Sue Matsuki. Hi, Hi Sue. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? We're doing great. Uh, do you want to tell everyone uh, a little bit about what you have done uh, to keep yourself creative uh, during uh uh, well, the last, let's say, 252 days. Yeah. Well, I'm a when you get lemons, make lemonade kind of gal, you know. So with the book, David and I were extremely disappointed we couldn't do a, a big book release and everything. But then we contacted all the big names in the book and said, let's go virtual. So we ended up doing this wonderful show. Richard actually hosted us one evening to present it. And that was really well received along with the book. So just thinking outside of the box. And that was at the time before any of us knew how to use Zoom and these whole, you know, latency singing issues and everything. So it was a huge learning curve. I feel like I am become like a techno girl, separate <laughs> from all the other skills that I've learned. And I'm able, you know, I'm able to help people, um, especially people of a certain age, because when you're older, I'm like, if you're over, over 50, don't touch the buttons, don't touch the buttons. Cause <laughs> you get a, you get a, a 50 plus person in a zoom meeting. It's a nightmare. You know? <laughs> so, well, so, there are um, TV commercials now that are uh, capitalizing on that. Uh, yeah. that are Miracle commercials. Yeah, I love the routine on Saturday Night Live where Alexis was called by every name in the book and she still answered for senior citizens. That just cracked me up. I'm like, hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> but I, every year I'm involved with um, Urban Stages Winter Rhythms. And this year we do 20 shows over 20 days featuring over 200 artists. And Tom Tosh and I, who are the producers, uh, he's a producer, I'm the co-producer. We arrange and wrangle all the bunnies and get this thing going. And it's massive and it's over, you know, 20 days. But this year, because of going virtual, of needing to go virtual, we had to really safeguard songwriter rights. You can't just put things up, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of us do, but you can't technically and legally put things up without securing rights. And as a theater, we could not violate the songwriters. So I'm like, why don't we just tribute the songwriter. And so that's what we did. Again, lemons to lemonade. And I asked a bunch of my friends and I'm putting up a show of some of my original songs with some of my friends' original songs. We have uh, Steve Seek featured who does all his original music, Tracy Stark, Gretchen Reinhagen, Rosemary Laura and Meg Flather and Tracy in Unexpected Trio. So now we have the rights because we have the permission of the actual songwriters and mm -hmm. Urban Stages feels really delighted and tickled that we could actually showcase another art form in our big umbrella of the artists. So uh, this year it's all about the songwriter. So I'm mm -hmm. really, really happy about that. It's going well. We open November 30th. I'm opening the series on November 30th. And because it's online, mm -hmm. you can watch me up up to like 96 hours and then the next show premieres and then the next show premieres. So we have six shows. And all of these shows have already been pre-recorded. Yes, but okay. recorded live in the theater. We wanted to, uh, we wanted to show our sponsors and our membership and certainly the people who support our theater that the theater is still alive. We're still doing stuff in the theater mm -hmm. and we've produced plays. We produced a big gala there in September, a fundraising gala. And, and I do we, says, excuse me, that there's no audience. No audience. And that's a little weird as a performer because you're, you know, we're interacting here. So there is response and call and response and everything. But when you're singing, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, there's a huge need for that, you know, <laughs> and you're kind of like, <laughs> okay, next song. Here's my patter. Ta-da. You know? uh -huh. So that in itself is another whole way of performing. And I think when I come back in, in, um, 
January to teach. I think I'm going to teach that. I think I'm going to teach where the camera is, um, you know, Zoom for senior citizens or whatever the need is out there. I think I'm going to put a class together under a Capri hotspot umbrella and, and teach something like that because it's a whole different way of performing this way, you know, and as you see, I'm, I've set up my, my office. Um, so it looks like a cabaret, like a, like a studio so that when I'm on screen, you know, mm -hmm. it will look a certain way and I can change the lights and all that. So there's a whole other thing that I want to get into teaching. I wish the book, I wish we knew what was going to happen because I would have added another chapter in the book about uh, performing in this new wave. You have a sequel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the workbook. We can call it the workbook. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so producing a, a, a gala like that, how were you able to do that and still do it within COVID safety rules and all that? Well, that was a trick. Like um, this, with the songwriters uh, series, most of them were three or four people cast. So we had three or four people. The theater's big. So we were all socially distanced, masks, okay. temperatures, the whole bit. The one cast where we had 15 people was pretty interesting. Three people in the basement, three people in the lobby, three people yeah. in the theater, three people up there. But the problem was a light went out. We got all backed up. And then it was just, you know, so I was out in the lobby you know, doing what I do is, uh, you know, putting everybody where they needed to be safely and everything. And we, we managed, but we did it under COVID rules because the theater authority also, uh, made us check in with them and say, you know, this is how we're going to do this. And, uh, staggered people when they were coming in to perform my band and I, I have a, I have, uh, Gregory Troy and Skip Ward playing for me. So they had masks on until we stood, uh, uh stepped on stage and then they were separated on stage. Deb Stone, who's coming up next, uh, she and I did a duet. We were physically separated, uh, although on the same stage, but six feet apart. So, yeah, we, we took a lot of care to make sure that that we would all be safe. And does that, does that change the dynamic when you, when you do it that way? No, you know, I the way cabaret performers perform mm -hmm. is wherever your song is with you. Yes, it's different when there's not someone in front of you, but it really shouldn't be if you're really... Um, centered and in your song and have done your homework and are singing from that perspective of giving out to someone else. Cause it's always ultimately always about the audience. So if you're singing from that place, I think it translates. I think it only doesn't translate when you're preoccupied with stuff and your environment. But if you're here and you're in that song and I made a point of actually reaching through the camera and saying, I know you want to clap. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I actually interacted with the audience every now and again in the show to make me feel like I was still connected to them, you know, outside. So, um, but it shouldn't change, you know, t cabaret technique is to be, have your connection and be in your song. Um, I, but I can't deny that having applause afterwards and having that one-on-one -on -one and being in front of someone to sing makes a huge difference and is a whole other way of singing. And I can't wait to get back to that. I miss that a lot. Yeah. Now I want to get Deborah on, but before I bring Deborah on, I want to ask you, uh, what was the distance between you and the camera and how did that uh, work for you? Oh, well, Urban had a three camera shoot. So when I tell you that this isn't just your straight ahead cabaret shoot, this looks like a TV show. They had one here, they had a camera on Gregory's hands and uh, the main camera was in the second row of the audience, not where you could normally have your camera because you'd have an audience there. Normally they do it up on the side and the, and they had great sound. They brought in another uh, sound tech to just run the soundboard so that the tech person could be. So yeah, I, I really think the way this looks, it looks like a TV filming. So we're very, we're all very excited about that. I can't wait for the other performers. They don't realize how good this is going to look and sound. So we're psyched. And of course, please post the information on. I just actually did all the notices on Facebook. Everybody will be getting uh, deluged with all my please come to the show things soon. <laughs> now, I want to bring Deborah Stone on. And uh, Deborah Stone started out as a dancer. Um, and I still remember uh, the first night that I saw Deborah Stone perform uh, at the salon. And I said, You've got something so special because she reminded me. Uh, in a positive way, and those of you will get this, of like a Helen Morgan type in terms of what she was presenting to the audience. And uh, she also 
uh, has embraced other areas of creativity. Um, she's a member of the LAMS, uh, which is, I think, New York's oldest theatrical organization. Is that right? Yes. And, yes. Uh, and Deborah has done uh, interview. Uh, she's done interviews. As a matter of fact, she beat me to the uh, punch with Sue's book and <laughs> interview before I got uh, to Sue. Uh, but Deborah, um, first of all, welcome. And what, thank you. Um, what have what has changed for you in terms of the technology of this business in terms of the way that you are bringing your craft to the world right now? Well, as we've been discussing, I mean, we've all turned into techno whizzes. I'm just amazed that I've learned as much as I have, and it's out of a desperation to move on. I wanted to just back up a little, though, to the beginning of the lockdown and in desperation, again, I use that word, the first thing I did was grab my guitar and start to play songs to people on you know, Facebook. I did that simply because I said, oh, I can't get together with an accompanist, but I can accompany myself. And it was just this, it burst out of me for some reason, that just desire, look, I can do this on my own and I can sing for you even though I can't get together with the musicians. So this very fertile time came out. I was singing all the old folk songs and just trying to make myself feel better and trying to make other people feel better as well. But as far as the technology, I'm digging it, frankly, because this is today. This is the new way. This yeah. is what we're going to have to do. And I'm looking into it in a more positive manner. It's going to expand our audience exponentially. We are going to be able to reach people. You might hear my cat talking right now. Um, <laughs> he's also being reached from another planet or something. Right. We're going to be able to reach more people. We're going to perhaps, God willing, monetize it more effectively for the houses that we're in, as well as for the performers, because you can get 500 people from all over the world buying a $5 ticket to hear you sing. So I'm excited about it. Anything that we can do to get our 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 talent out there is what I wanna do. And I hope that well, answered your question. Uh, yes, I have a question for you and I hope that I'm not gonna put you on the spot with this. Uh, but oh, I go remember, ahead. No, <laughs> I remember also when uh, the lockdown hit us here in New York and I remember very uh, vividly, you grabbing the uh, guitar and starting to stream that way. Yes. Um, and yes. you know, and you pretty much were very consistent in terms of when you were presenting this, and then you stopped doing it. Is there a reason yeah. why you stopped? It was sort of just an outburst, and it wasn't something I I figured. I, I'm not quite sure. I'm trying to put myself back in the mindset of that time, which is an entirely different mindset. It was sort of a, um, a f uh, sort of a, a frantic reaching out of uh, of not knowing what was going to happen. You have to think back. We were afraid to touch anything. We were right. afraid to breathe if we went out on the street. So there was a and lot of fear under lockdown here in New York. For those that are not in New York City watching this. Yes, and, and but now we know, oh, I can put on my mask, I can go out, I can just stay away from people, I can wash, I can, I have the cleanest hands I've ever had in my entire life. So, I mean, we're, we're, we have more of a handle on exactly what we're dealing with, you know what I mean? But, and, and you know, I did stop and, and you kind of did put me on the spot because I don't know why I stopped. I think I might've run out of songs, I don't know. <laughs> also, well, I, I was not, you know, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I think also if I make make an observation, this is something that I um, I've just been thinking of, and that you might appreciate this also, Doctor Bloom, is this feeling that no matter what we're doing now, no matter how much we're doing now, it doesn't feel like it's enough yeah. because we're doing it this way, and because we think we have to do so much more, and it's almost um, it, it's just still a feeling. Uh, I'm not doing enough. Why am I not doing this? She's doing this. Why am I not doing that? And so it's it's sporadically unhealthy, you know, that mindset. I just have to keep the blinders on and do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. and, and Richard always says, and stay in our lane. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. So really, that, that the affirmations, right? You know, really acknowledging to yourself out loud how much you are doing. 
Uh, you know, and that, as you said, rather than you know succumbing to uh, you know a doom and gloom scenario about everything, you've kind of embraced it and said, "Okay, well, let's learn this technology and let's yes. pass it on to others and make them comfortable with it and understand that we can yes. expand our theater base to you know hundreds of, or thousands of more people." How cool is that? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's a shift in mindset and being able to mm -hmm. to know that that is what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? You know, and it's thank like any for journey, that. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, it's like any journey that we begin, um, we somehow seem to know what the destination is. We know how we're going to get there. Uh, we know what we're going to do when we get there. Um, but this journey uh, is uh, like going into outer space. Uh, there doesn't seem to be this grasp of where we are in the scheme of things, where we fit in. Um, as I said at the top of the show, uh, today marks 252 days since our theaters shut down. Um, it's been nine months now. Uh, time to give birth, I guess. Um, Mindy, I want to ask you, we'll go around and let everyone weigh in on this, and Dr. Bloom, uh, you as well. Uh, but Mindy, what um, has changed the most in you as far as your creativity is concerned over the past nine months? Well, what, uh, one thing I realized about myself is during this whole journey, this whole experience, is that I need to be performing all the time. Like I can't, like I, in the past, I was going through periods where I was just writing a show, like writing a new show. And I'd go months and months just writing and with my director and we'd be, you know, all that. But it's like, and I wasn't performing. And what I realized was because I, when I started doing the show and started performing every day or then, then a few times a week is that I really need to be performing all the time. And then I started actually, and also I had a ukulele for years and my ex-husband and I were, you know, we play, we, we sing together. And so he had the guitar and I just had it there and I would like fake it sometimes. But what I, what, well, the other thing that unfolded for me in this is that I started learning the ukulele and now I'm learning the guitar. And that's like been an expansion for me. <clears throat> and it's like, I'm really realizing how much I love having an instrument, not just singing. And so for me, it's like, it's just keeping looking at, there's always a silver lining, always. Like no matter what is thrown at us, you have to keep looking for the good because there's always good going on. And I say this on my show, Richard, you know, I always say yeah. that, but it's true. There's always good going on no matter what. And um, so, yeah, for me, I feel more creative than ever, actually. And it's like, I, you know, even with like my costumes, like how I put my clothes together, I don't know. I've just, for me, it's like, I've been, I've been feeling much more creative actually. And it's been, that's been really great. Mm -hmm. And learning instruments. It's a lot of work, but it's like, I'm, 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 I've been doing a little bit each day and taking lessons and it's been really wonderful. It's great. And Sue, with you, what do you feel has changed the most in you uh, over the past nine months? Hmm. A lot has changed in that I have, <laughs> I've, I've come to realize that that this is the, in some way I hate to say it. This time has been such a gift to me. Mm -hmm. I'm always runny. I'm always multitasking. I always have my hands in fifteen different things, and to have the time, the luxury of time to learn something new every day to go back and do things I used to love to do. I sew, I made wedding gowns to put myself through college. I was a really good seamstress. I never sew anymore. So my new COVID project going into the winter is I'm gonna make a quilt of my, my travels for my husband and I. I'm gonna make a quilt for, you know, my sister-in-law is gonna be so happy to hear that she's been trying to get me to do this for years. But- For those who don't know, Sue and her husband can row travel the world, <laughs> yes. Yeah, the, the name of my book, if I ever write it, is I Honeymoon in the Amazon Jungle. True story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, you know, so it, I, I have um, learned that I have so much more um, to learn because I've gotten all this time to embrace and to stop and enjoy the process. I've always been one to enjoy the process of putting a show together. I love working on the songs and making the arrangements and getting them to the band. I love those layers. 
but that's now my life. I can stop and enjoy the process to whatever this new block of time is going to bring me. Like urban stages is winding down. What am I going to do next? You know, um, and that's part my type A personality and part my multitasking abilities. But I, I, I'm looking forward to new projects and go and and revisiting old stuff that I used to love to do. You know, Great. so yeah. And Deborah. Okay, I knew I was next. No, a lot of things. <laughs> How do you narrow it down? I mean, yeah. I think the biggest difference, what I've decided is to do things I haven't done musically. Case in point, I recorded in a studio for the very first time this month. I recorded several cuts from my solo show. I'm going to be getting into a studio with Dean Sanders and John Cook to, to video um, duets that she and I did in our show and maybe a couple of solos. I'm taking a wonderful workshop with Gregory Taroyan, the piano bass drums workshop uh, every Tuesday night this month, which has been a thrill because I'm, I'm, I, I can, I can, and I'm just admitting this and it's true. I can sing pretty much anything and there's so much music to be sung that I'm excited about expanding my jazz chops i'm expanding into different genres and working with other musicians is thrilling so i'm cramming a lot into this particular month well i'm getting knee replacement surgery in december so i was going okay november i have to do all these things right there uh, before, before i go into clausura with my knee these workshops that you're doing are you doing them in person or virtually yes uh, Gregory Taroyan, who, as you know, is very, very aware of uh, germs in the first place. <laughs> he has, he has, I don't want to say, you know. I can. I've, I've been doing it for 25 years. <laughs> I know. He's a genius. He's a musical genius. And you see the wheels, the gears in his head just turning when he looks at you that way. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. It's good. But uh, here it comes, you know. And so it's been a thrill. But no, he's got it set up very carefully. There are only four participants in the class. We have, we're masked for distance. We have wipes for the, the shield on the thing. We've got the foam, each have our own little foam thing on the microphone. I mean, it's all very careful and it's a joy to get into a room. And I mean, drums and bass, please, what a thrill. This is new for me, you know, mm -hmm. it's all good. I'm enjoying that. So I guess what I, what I could say is that's what's changed is I'm taking this time to branch out to try other things that I haven't done. Yeah. And Dr. Bloom, do you want to weigh in on anything that's been discussed? Sure. Well, doing, doing this show is, you know, mm -hmm. for me, a creative outlet. Um, for those who don't know, my background is television news uh, for many, many years. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to being uh, on camera and then I had a radio show on the air for, uh, for about five years in LA. So it's, this is a piece of me that had gotten put on a back burner, if you will, for, mm -hmm. for a number of years. So it's exciting to be back out doing that again. Mm -hmm. And I've also, I've used, you know, the time to, uh, creatively to come up with new worksheets for my patients, you know, um, giving them home, new kinds of homework assignments, you know, coming up with, with new creative ways of helping others to think differently mm -hmm. about what's going on in their lives. Um, and even pulling out old, you know, textbooks uh, and, you know, really narrowing down, okay, you know, this person has an obsessive disorder, you know, exactly what kind is it and how am I going to specifically treat that disorder and what kind of program can I come up with for that particular patient? So it's given me a little bit of time to do those kinds of things where I would normally be out, you know, socializing with friends. <laughs> Now I'm gonna shift gears and go in the opposite direction. And since I'm gonna go in the opposite direction, I'm gonna go in another way of going around the round table. And I'll start with you, Deborah, this time. Um, okay. when we've talked about what we've embraced. Uh, what has been uh, the biggest resistance for you during this time frame uh, when it comes to your art and your creativity? Wow. You got a minute? Um, <laughs> what has been the biggest resistance in terms of my creativity? I get lazy. Um, I curl up and read. 
I've allowed myself to do that, to go out into the garden. We have a wonderful garden here, even in the cold today, I was out there reading. Um, but I guess that doesn't necessarily mean resistance. It means I've got the time and I love to read. I, I haven't found much resistance. Um, I, like Sue had mentioned, I agree. It has been a rather liberating time where you could actually mm -hmm. focus perhaps more keenly. Um, I thought maybe I would have lost, you know, gotten rusty in the, the pipes as far as singing. And then I was able to go in and record it. I can still sing. So, I mean, I, I, um, I, resistance. I can't think of anything else that I, that I really had to feel a pushback. So I'll have to maybe get back to you on that. Okay. Absolutely. Actually, maybe explain, explain a little bit more to me what you mean about resistance that I have felt. Well, I'll give you an example. Um, early on, um, and you know, when she was on one of her earlier shows, and so I'll mention her. I mean, Karen Mason at first was not doing uh, any of her live concerts and everything. She's embraced oh, that. Did. She's come in. Um, a lot of people uh, were late coming to the table as far as Zoom and uh, right. stream, uh, streaming and all of those things. Um, uh, you know, I've heard people say, uh, and I've brought this up before, um, I can't wait till I have my life back. Um, and I feel that they are in this suspended animation uh, because I keep telling them, uh, I hate to be rough on you, but this is your life. This, yes. is, this is what we have today. So, you know, people, you know, uh, have resisted uh, jumping on this bandwagon or doing this or right. even, you know, Wearing a mask for some people mm -hmm. is a resistance. Absolutely. Okay, I, I do. Now that you said that, I, I, I hope I, I can get this in. Um, uh, it's um, not the mask wearing. I'm, I'm okay with that. But the, I have been resisting watching everything that everybody's doing. I have been putting it just away because we're streaming. We're doing this. We're live. We're that. I mean, this evening, we're going to watch a, a, a Paul Taylor. Shh. And um, uh, somebody's hungry. Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> He's not hungry. He's just talking. It's OK. okay um, but it, so yes, I have been resisting. I've also been feeling occasionally jealous of other people that are doing this, 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 that. And I'm going, mm -hmm. well, why am I not doing that? It's because I'm doing that instead. Mm -hmm. So I've had to narrow it down and also had to pick and choose what I'm going to be watching, what I'm going to be buying tickets for. Income is scarcer now. And so I had to be more, uh, it's okay, he's fine. Uh, I had to be more, um, more, um, uh, sorry. I'd have to be more, I'd have to be more uh, discerning about picking mm -hmm. and choosing. So yeah, I was pushing back. Everybody's saying, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Are you watching? I say, you know what? I'm not. I'm pushing back on the news because I can only take so much. So right. yes, that's where my resistance has been. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Sue? Thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, I was similar to what Deb said. Um, I didn't want to put anything up for the interweb forever that wasn't looking and sounding decently. Because initially, before we all learned about latency issues and learned how to present, uh, there was a lot of really bad things going up. And I was unlike you being jealous of other people putting things up, I was like, Ooh, really, do you want that up there forever? You know? Mm -hmm. So I made myself wait. I made myself learn the equipment. I've been helping other people learn how to do it. I did a couple of open mics and I love to go to the open mic, like, especially when I'm doing a show, I love these people, but the way they're run on zoom, it's, it's so confusing and it's two hours out of my life that I can't get back when I need to create something. And when you have 30 minutes of that, people pressing buttons and screaming over each other, I'm like, okay, I love you, but I don't want to do this, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's not a judgment on anybody having to sing whatever way they need to sing, but I have so many things on my plate that to spend two hours to do one number, because I'm going to be polite. I'm going to stay there and listen to everybody sing, but I just don't do them anymore. I've chosen not to do them. And I'm getting ready and gearing up to want to do a, a new show. It's a show that I was supposed to debut at the beach, 
I was going to make my beach debut and it was going to be a brand new show called uh, This Broad's Way, Broadway songs done a la mm -hmm. me, a la Gregory and I. And uh, it's ready to go. It's a great show, but I'm trying to figure out the best way Were to you do it. To do that, Sue, um, the week that the, everything shut down? Yeah. Okay. I was, I, we did the Bistro Awards. You and I had dinner and went to see Jennifer Pace the next day mm -hmm. and everything closed down and my show was the following Saturday at the beach. Wow. So that's yeah. how it all timed out, you know. Um, I think though the resistance comes with, and Richard knows this because we work in a group together, um, uh, artist way kind of group together. And um, I'm a huge procrastinator. A lot of people out there who know me and know how I multitask will be very surprised to hear. And when I procrastinate and then I have to wait to the last minute and I put so much stress on myself and I get, you know what, I get crazy and upset with myself and I'm all like, none of this had to happen. I, I'm, I'm good at this, you know, and just by waiting and waiting and waiting and then putting all that stress on. So again, not enjoying the journey. Mm -hmm. um, of getting to where I want to be comfortably because I stress out and then I have to get everything done. Um, yeah, cramming this, for an exam. Yeah. This is where I'm really trying to learn how to, how to just get it done, you know, just get it done, get it off my plate and guess what? It's done. It's gone. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know? So yeah. Exactly. Uh, Mindy. Okay. So, um, I get burned out on, uh, there's so much, yeah, there's so many people performing and doing shows and you know, I'm invited to say, you know, this solo show and this solo show. And I get like, I, I have to be very discerning too. Well, I, you know, it's like, I can't be watching everybody I know who's, who's doing a show on, on zoom. And I get like burned out on watching too much stuff on online. And then I have to, I just don't want to be on the computer all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I get like that too. And then, you know, some of them, you have to, most of them you have to pay for and you have to, you know, I just can't be buying every single ticket to every show that I know about, you know what I'm saying? So like what you said, Deborah, so, and then. But, you know, excuse me for interrupting, yeah. but don't you all feel that this is pretty much what our lives were like uh, even before the pandemic? I mean, oh, those yeah. of us who oh, are, yeah, definitely. Busy, you know, our friends are performing. We want right. to support them. We can't go see everything. So it's, see everything. it's pretty much. Uh, the same situation. That we're all well, similar. I mean, it's similar in that way, but on lo it's watching things on a screen. It's like you can get burned out on that. Like sometimes I don't want to be on a screen. Yeah. Like, I, mm -hmm. you know, I want to be in real life and I don't want to be watching on a screen all the time, you know, so mm -hmm. I get, you know, like that. And then, um, and also the technology, you know, like learning StreamYard. Thank God for Richard. Richard's been helping me because I was doing for like seven months, I was doing my show on my iPhone on a tripod, a tri on my tripod and a bracket. And then, um, and so now I'm working. And so it's, you know, the technology stuff. Okay, I have to learn StreamYard. There's all the stuff and the YouTube thing. So there's just all that stuff. And um, so I'm, you know, it's a learning curve with all that. And then just watching everybody else. Oh, they're doing this and that, the same thing. Like when you, when you see everybody doing a million things and you're like, well, I'm not doing this, whatever. But it's like, you just have to stay with what you're being led to do. And that's, that's enough. It's like, you're, you're, you're doing this and they're doing that. And that's, you know, their destiny. And this is my destiny and my path. Exactly. And Dr. Bloom, your thoughts on all of this? Yeah, uh, you know, for me, I'm online all day long. I'm on Zoom with patients all day long. So the last thing I want to do is look at anything else. <laughs> or look sure. At anything yeah. else, you know? So I found myself, you know, uh, basically not going on any social media because I don't want to look on a computer. <laughs> I just right. don't. Um, and limiting other screen time in general, uh, certainly. And I was a news junkie. I watch a whole lot less news than I used to because it becomes, it just bombards you after a while. And, you know, especially now, news. especially right now. Especially right now, exactly. Yeah. Well, activity mm -hmm. that's part of that. So I've really limited myself in terms of how much news I actually watch. I'll read a newspaper, but very little uh, television news. Um, it, it, so it's, you know, it, it, it definitely is a shift. It's, you know, it really is. Um, you know, I value my quiet time, I mm -hmm. think, more than I used to. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I, I found that I'll just, you know, rather than uh, doing anything else, I'll either read a book or I'll dance. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll do something, right? Um, but different than my norm before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, 
one of the things that Sue mentioned that I always say for me, it's all about uh, staying in my lane uh, yeah. and keeping my blinders on and not really being consumed with it, what everyone else is doing. I put out, as you all know, a lot of product. Um, I'm saying this to all of you in the room. I'm saying this to everyone who's watching. You don't have to be at every show that I do. The great thing about what I do is that it's preserved on the podcast. It's available on uh, YouTube. Um, and I would not want to put that kind of pressure on any of my friends uh, to have to be there uh, always. Uh, I put it out there and if you are able to make it, great. And if you're not able to make it, that's fine too, uh, because we're all on our own paths. I want to ask each of you, and I'll start with you this time, Sue, um, how you keep your focus uh, with all of the stuff that you're being bombarded uh, uh, that's surrounding you and how you are staying true to your art in the midst of this crazy time we're in. Well, I... You know, I come from a corporate world and I was in a personal assistant to a billionaire for 23 years and I am uh, a list doer. I I have a to-do list. I teach this in, you know, the art of uh, business that I teach, a class that I teach on the business of uh, cabaret. I do a to-do list. I categorize it by, you know, home, house, singing, whatever new project. I ABC prioritize it, but that list is pretty big and that's that can freak most people out. Mm -hmm. What I do is every morning after I do my morning pages, I grab a piece of paper and I write down 10 things, ideally that I'd like to get done today. Mm -hmm. There's no pressure to get them done, but 10 things from that list. Some could be C priority, some could be B, some could be A, but I look at my calendar, okay, the shows are launching on November 30th, I've got to get those notices up on Facebook. That's a today thing. Insurance, I have to have it secured by December 15th. That's a today thing, you know. And so I'm very good about that. Doing that, I highly recommend it because it keeps you on point. And there's nothing like, Dr. Judy, you'll probably uh, agree with me. There's nothing more gratifying than clicking off a to-do list, right? It yeah. feels so yeah. good. <laughs> and if you just, yeah. right, right. And if you just have those 10 things every day, and even if there's two left, guess what? There's only two things that carry over the next day and you have eight other things. So eventually you're chipping away at this really big list. And then I update it every, um, you know, the first of every month to make sure that I have what's going forward for the next month. So I I'm very good about that. I'm very disciplined about that. And it, it helps me. It helps me stay focused. And uh, Mindy? Wait, what was the question? I am like, um, I what was the question now? How do you stay focused in the mid oh, middle? That's of right. How do I stay focused? I can't remember. <laughs> okay. There's irony in that, isn't there? <laughs> I'm not focused. Okay. How do I stay focused? Well, um, let's see. Well, I I pray a lot. I pray a lot. I'm a very prayerful person, and I just I don't know. I just it's like a moment by moment unfoldment. I mean, I write my list too. And I don't get them all done every day, but it's just kind of like, I just let my life unfold every day, which feels right in the moment. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's, I don't know it. And I, you have your overall mission in life. I have my mission with the smile revolution is we raise awareness to the healing power of a genuine smile. So I have my mission, my show and everything else I'm doing. And it's just, I don't know. It's just, I have my focus on my life and my purpose. Mm -hmm. That's great. And I'm not always every minute. I mean, you know, I watch Netflix too. <laughs> That's no. a girl. <laughs> um, I admire the heck out of you, Sue. I mean, really. Talk about organized. Um, I am organized, but in a rather messy fashion. I will wake up in the morning and feel if, if there's something I really need to do, I do it immediately. I also have two calendars, uh, my calendar on my phone and our date book by the phone so we can both look at each other's uh, mm -hmm. stuff. But I, I know when I have to get something done and I do it, I pretty much just feel the urgency of the moment. I'm, I, have, uh, I don't make lists. I have things that I need to put on the calendar, but if I know I have to get something done, I just do it. And you know, when you, back in the day when you could actually go out and <laughs> be someplace else, which I actually I can, that you'd wake up in the morning and you'd see yourself, let's say go to Central Park in the snow. I'm going to Central Park. I'm going to the museum or whatever. I see when I wake up, I see what it is that I need to do. 
So maybe I'm more of a, I don't You're know. You're just doing the same thing in your head something. though. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no lists. Maybe I should make lists. You see, now I feel bad about not making lists. <laughs> wow. It's just because I'm old, I'm turning 62. I can't remember anything. Hey, so. oh, and yeah. I have to tell you, you know, everyone, we are on the cusp of huh? Sue's birthday, which is tomorrow. So happy Yay, birthday. Sue. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Dr. Bloom, any thoughts on any of this? But, uh, making lists, I tell everybody to make lists <laughs> yeah, and, and prioritize it and break it down into small, small. manageable bites. That's really, really important. So, you know, you have some big project you've got to do, get it where you can do it, do 15 minutes you know, over a longer period of time to get there. Um, and, and breaking the day up like that as well. So, you know, if you've got a short attention span, great. Then commit to 15 or 20 minutes of working on whatever it is you've got to work on and then take a five minute break, but make a five minute, not half an hour. Um, and, you know, reward yourself in some way uh, it, it, in those periods, you know? So I think all of those are really good approaches. Uh, you know, for me, I, this is my book, my Bible, if you will. Let me get that. No. There you go. And every page. I love that you voted. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I'm going to say that there's been a theme to my shows this week because on three of the shows that I've done, a cat has tried to upstage uh, the, the shows. So uh, there's something going on in the air and everything. Um, we Tiggy, are getting Tiggy's right here. She wants yes. to say hi. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's right by my side. We are almost at the end of the show. Um, I, I want to, you know, very quickly, and then we will say our uh, closing remarks. Um, I want to go around with each of you and uh, let us know what's next for you. What's coming up? It could be a show that you're doing online. It could be something that you're putting out that you want people to be aware of. Um, with the artist way that I do with Sue, um, we do uh, every week what is called an artist date. And a, an artist date from Julia Cameron is going out and doing something that makes you feel great and connects you with your art. So, um, and I'll start with you, Mindy. What's next for you? Uh, well, this um, Sunday, and Richard, you're on it. I'm doing a special Thanksgiving Smile Revolution show. And what we're doing, I'm going to be talking about the history of Thanksgiving. It's at 2 o'clock on um, Facebook, my Facebook pages, uh, Mindy Fradkin, Princess Well, and on YouTube. And um, I'm, I'm going to have special guests. Richard's one of them. And we're going to go around and talk about um, what we're doing for Thanksgiving this year in COVID and also what we're grateful for. And I'll be doing some other things, some uplifting quotes about gratitude. And we'll be talking about, gra you know, gratitude, obviously. Thank you. And Sue? Yeah. Um, November 30th, I open up Winter Rhythms uh, with my show. It's called How Original. Run for three days. It's all on Facebook, on my page, and on my website. Um, then I'm going to try to do my show in 2021, uh, the This Broadway show. And I think I'm going to pull back a little bit and do some sewing and make my quilt and just do something other than just my work in the arts. You know, I need a little break. Thank you. And Deborah? Well, um, interestingly enough, tomorrow, I, I was an a, a ensemble member in the Chelsea Opera for many years. And I recently was, uh, I received an email just a few days ago. They are reaching out to former members of Chelsea Opera to interview them. And I'm going to be interviewed tomorrow at four. So that'll be interesting to revisit my Chelsea Opera days, which was, they were thrilling, absolutely thrilling. Uh, I'm going to do more of the workshop with Gregory Tuesday night. Um, uh, th the 30th, uh, Josephine and John and I are going into tape. And then, of course, I have my knee surgery on December 7th. So that's what's coming up for me. I look forward to oh, it. and I'll be cooking for Deb while she's, uh, <laughs> I'll be bringing her food while she's laid up. <laughs> that's great. And Dr. Bloom, what's next for you creatively? Creatively, cooking Thanksgiving dinner is, is definitely what's up for me. Are you going to be able to have any family uh, for Thanksgiving yeah, Both dinner? my children, yes. Oh, so that's great. That are going to be Wonderful. able to do uh, that's are driving are, gonna, are now driving distance. So that's they wonderful. Actually, drive to me, and they're getting they're doing self quarantine beforehand. They're getting tested before they come. You know, and I I've been more insistent on it. And I tell them we're going to eat outdoors. That's <laughs> and, wonderful. Uh, yeah, that's just. Now you're in Florida. You can do that. 
That's great. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Like I said, this was episode six. It's hard to believe. Um, I want everyone to have a wonderful Thanksgiving, a safe uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, Dr. Bloom and I will be back uh, after Thanksgiving on December 3rd. And I want to let everyone know, if you have suggestions or ideas uh, for this show, uh, things that are on your mind, things you want us to talk about or anything, uh, please drop me a line, richard at richardskipper.com or private message me on Facebook, uh, and we will do the shows. These shows are for you. Uh, we want to keep you entertained, uh, but we want to keep you uh, safe as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I always end all my shows by telling everyone to go out and do something nice for somebody else without expecting anything in return. Uh, that'll give you a special feeling right here. Um, I don't know if any of you that are here uh, have product that you can give away, but because I know that Sue does and it's her birthday uh, tomorrow, uh, I want you to go to your Facebook friends list and the first name that pops up. I want you to order two copies of Sue's book, Wanna <laughs> Think Cabaret. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. One for yourself and send one to the first friend on your friends list. And even if they're not a cabaret singer, uh, there's a lot about the history of cabaret in the book. So it's a very good read. And I highly recommend it uh, to everyone. And if anybody uh, orders a book from this web uh, from this uh, production, I will throw in a CD for them too. With my, so, you know, gratitude. do that. Do it through me, and we will get okay. the uh, to Sue. Um, and I want to end the show by you know going around once again and letting everyone uh, say whatever's on your mind. It can be about anything we've discussed tonight, anything that we didn't discuss that you wish that we had or just a message that you want to put out to everyone who's watching tonight. And again, it means the world to me uh, that you spend an hour with uh, me anytime that I'm uh, in front of the camera. So thank you for all for that. And for that, I'm grateful. Uh, Mindy. Oh, well, let's see. I'm, I don't know why I'm thinking this, but like, I feel like um, people should wear hats more. I don't know why I'm thinking that, but like when you when I wear my hats, it's like it makes, I don't know why this coming to my thought now. It's like, it makes people happy and smile. Like it makes, it uplifts them. And I just feel like, you know, it would be nice for people to wear hats more, even in a pandemic, because it is uplifting for people. Absolutely. And Sue? <laughs> I'm just, I just want to say thank you, Richard. You have been a friend for ever and to this panel for, for allowing me to be here today, but also to everybody watching and everybody out there, happy Thanksgiving, know how much and how grateful I am for your friendship and your support. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah. Richard, I don't know how you do it. I admire you so. Thank I you. mean, every day, right? You're doing something. And also there's something about this new, this new virtual world that enables you to do more of what you do. You Thank know, you. you don't have to wait to get into a room. You are out there and you're the best interviewer I know of. So, no, I mean, uh, that's what I wanted to bring up. And thank you for having me, really. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me. It was really wonderful. Thank and thank you. you, Dr. Judy, for being here and all your great advice. Thank you. Yes. And we will be back December 3rd. But Dr. Bloom, you've got the final word. I have so much gratitude for everything in my life. I really do. And to all of you for being on this show and being willing to give us your time. And Richard, enormous gratitude for having met you. Oh, thank That's you so much. The highlight of I feel the same way. Thank you. Richard, like, is, is, you're amazing. And I just love you so much. And thank you all for watching and happy Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, I've got one more thing that I'm going to say before we sign off. And we're going to go around again. And just very quickly, the first thing that pops into your mind, Thanksgiving dinner, what has to be on the menu? Mindy. Smiles. <laughs> Sue. Canned cranberry sauce. Deborah. <laughs> Pumpkin pie. Yeah. And Dr. Bloom. To keep my kids happy, I make apple butterscotch pie and a chocolate bourbon pecan. I'm oh, coming to your house. I'll so be fun. right over. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Good night. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.